So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good middle of the night, whatever it is, wherever you are. Um, uh, where's my agenda? There it is. So we have our usual reminders. Um, Todd will go over for um, the call for papers for the forum, and uh, that's yesterday. But maybe we can still submit. Um, Hackfest planning, and July, then we have not, July, not June. Oh, I'm sorry, it is July. You're right, yep. and it's not July. Um, uh, then we have some updates from Quilt and Identity. Do we have people on for those? Maybe a I'm on. I'm on, um, uh, Chris. It's uh, Vipin. Uh, thanks, Vipin. All right. So, do we have um, anyone from the Quilt team? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Can I please repeat the question? I'm asking if there's somebody on from the Quilt team to do the update. I'm not sure who's. It, it doesn't look like anything got updated into the wiki either yesterday, oh, okay. so, unfortunately. All right. And I can't click the link here. So, um, okay, so then we have identity, and then um, and just I just has a, have here as a placeholder um, the copyright discussion, which is held up because people are on PTO um, uh, or traveling. So um, so we'll just hold that as a placeholder. Any other items for today's agenda? Okay, if not, then uh, Todd, you wanna. Yep. Um, so just a couple quick things. Reminder, Hyperled to Global Forum, which is the end of this year, December in Basel. Uh, we have the call for papers open for that right now. That will close about a month from now, July 13th. We'd love to see a lot of technical content in there from the folks on this call and the broader community. Please get abstracts submitted. Uh, the Amsterdam Hackfest is in about two weeks from now. Um, we have a lot of people registered for this. The training day is full up. Uh, the Hackfest is also, we've got well over 100 people registered for that. Fantastic to see the interest. The one thing I will say there, and I'm dropping the link into the chat window, uh, the Rocket Chat TSU channel, is we have the draft agenda. I've noticed people have started mapping sessions to actual times on that Thursday and Friday. Please continue to do so. There's a lot of good uh, agenda items and topics suggested lower in the document, but I think we want to start getting those mapped out in advance so people can hit the ground running uh, as soon as they get there. Yep. Otherwise, it's, it's looking good. And then the final thing is just related to the final Hackfest for the year will be in Montreal October 3rd to 4th, and registration right. is open for that. And that's uh, tagged on to the uh, member summit. So Correct, yeah. Hopefully lots of people will be there. Okay, excellent. So we don't have anybody from Quilt. So Vipin, you're up. Can you hear me now? I can hear you just fine. Okay, great. Now, it doesn't um, mean anybody else can, but. <laughs> well, that is a indicator, <laughs> right, Chris? The, right. Anyway, uh, so uh, <clears throat> Todd should have the link in, in, a, in the agenda. So if uh, I just don't want to go and read what is there, but uh, basically if you have taken a look and if you have any comments, uh, please get back to me, but I can just quickly go over exactly uh, what is there in the list. I mean, in the uh, document here. So we have a pretty healthy uh, attendance. Um, Every two weeks, we hold the um, audio conferences. There has been some requests, uh, sporadic, to change it so that people from other parts of the world can take part. Mm. This seems to be a, a continuing request in other working groups that I have attended. Um, it, it becomes a challenge because obviously there will be somebody who's inconvenienced no matter where, when you hold it. But the suggestion yesterday was to uh, move it up uh, by an hour, which means 11 o'clock on Wednesday, 
so that makes it easier for people from uh, China uh, to uh, participate because it won't be uh, midnight to one o'clock, but it'll be some, somewhere like 11 o'clock, a little mm -hmm. kinder hour. But it also means that the West Coast will be affected a little bit. Yeah. Uh, because again, it will be at eight o'clock instead of nine o'clock. Um, so in terms of the work products, um, I, I mean, in terms of the attendance, we already have people it is, it is a very popular working group. Uh, a lot of people uh, turn up with uh, new participants, uh, you know, maybe one or two every, mm -hmm. uh, every call. And uh, the diversity is astonishing because of the fact that uh, people from all uh, different uh, professions and walks of life seem to find identity a compelling topic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, things like people from governments, the legal profession, uh, and students, which, you know, in addition to, of course, the usual suspects from the technical companies, DLT companies, and others. Um, overall activity, uh, we have a regular cadence, uh, you know, we've not uh, skipped a single meeting. And... Um, the paperwork is, the work on the paper is uh, challenging to say the least because uh, again, the topic is vast. We are trying to get our, uh, you know, hands around it. Uh, I don't know who's, who's uh, somebody needs to go on mute. It looks like, uh, sounds very, anyway. Um, so, The paper, you know, the work on the paper is proceeding. We have uh, uh, come up with a way to volunteer uh, and uh, work on the paper together. Um, and a lot of material has been contributed uh, and we need to uh, make it, uh, you know, draft quality. I hope to do that by the end of this particular quarter. Um, the other items are that the paper itself uh, needs to be split into two parts is, is the general consensus. One is, you know, there'll be a general, uh, general paper on identity matters as it relates to blockchain and hyperledger DLTs in particular. And then there will be technical section that will... Um, um, you know, that will deal specifically with identity as a uh, conduit for interoperability, uh, identity as a pivot for interoperability, uh, which has uh, been uh, the case since the beginning, but we will make that into a separate, uh, separate section in the paper or a separate paper. Uh, that might mean that we might have another uh, another call, much like the um, architecture working group has a call for security and confidentiality um, in a staggered cadence, which means if the, if the weeks in which the uh, architecture working group meets, uh, they won't have the call, but on the other week where when the identity meets, they'll have the call on Friday. Uh, so this is the general gist of, uh, or, you know, what's in the, in the, uh, in the document, uh, the uh, report. Two requests. One is we need more experts from the DLT platforms on identity to show up and contribute, which obviously was uh, asked in the last session also, but uh, we don't see that contribution. But we do see contribution of people from other, uh, other organizations, other parts like EEA, people who are associated with Ethereum, people who are associated with other 
organizations showing up and talking about making this um, a standard that is applicable, not just inside Hyperledger, but in a broader context. Of course, we get people from uh, all the other identity related groups like DIF, like IIW, like Rebooting Web of Trust uh, and others because, and, uh, and Verifiable Claims uh, Working Group in W3C, because we have people from Indy who are, uh, and others sovereign and others who are interested in these topics and they do uh, show up in the identity call and talk about what what's happening under the rubric of digital identity elsewhere. So I await uh, further comments from the TSC uh, and uh, we just want to get on with the work uh, of creating the paper and getting a draft together. Okay, but Vipin, so given everything you just said, are you confident you you can actually get that done? Yes, uh, I am confident that we can get that done, but uh, you know, identity is a huge topic. So yeah. how comprehensive will the output be depends on the breadth of the participation. Yeah, but I, on that front, I would highly recommend looking at what the architecture working group did which I think was brilliant is not to try to grok everything at once, but instead try to splice the problem into several, you know, pieces yeah. that are more manageable. Yeah, sure. Um, I, uh, I am actually a participant in the architecture working group and very familiar with how we broke it up and so on. So that is a good suggestion. And that is why we want to break it up into those two sections. Uh, so that we can uh, have a more manageable uh, output stream. Well, so, so I, I would agree with that. And then the other thing that caught my attention was you mentioned the word standard and I think, you know, Brian and company have been trying to make it pretty clear that we're doing development of code here, not standards. And so the W3C and if and potentially EEA and so forth are the ones that are focusing a little bit more on standards. I do think that it is so. So I guess I guess the, the question I have is really, you know, is it the intention of the working group that they're creating a standard, or are they really just sort of highlighting these exist and these are the ones that you know we've decided to try to organize ourselves around? as a coherent means of approaching identity because there's, you know, there's, there's differing, differing approaches. And, and so I think, you know, understanding of that <clears throat> and then trying to sort of align with the thinking of the various platforms as to how they can interoperably exchange identity. Because I think, again, you know, when people, I, I, I get every, every day, I hear about quote unquote interoperability, which I think is a bunch of mumbo jumbo when you're talking about from one DLT platform to another, unless you have interoperable data standards that you're adhering to. But identity is going to be the key thing of being able to sort of provide some sort of a bridge between platforms um, to carry identity across. And again, that is going to require standards, but I hope it's not the intention that we're the ones setting them. We are not the ones setting them, but uh, if we are going to develop an interface, which is a second part of the yeah. uh, charter, that interface between the different DLTs under Hyperledger, because they are so varied uh, and uh, kind of reflect the macrocosm of, uh, of DLTs, we have everything from Indy, which is specifically focused on identity, to you know, Fabric, uh, 
sawtooth, which is similar to some of the, uh, you know, in, in, in the scope. Uh, and of course we have Burrow, we have, um, uh, we have other, other platforms there, Quilt and so on. So uh, we are uh, singularly poised to influence the standards, maybe not set them, but we have, we have a way to, uh, if we develop that technical, uh, um, technical document about, inter uh, 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 about a generic interface, then that will inform the standard because it is, uh, standards are often an interplay of uh, uh, somebody doing something uh, normative and somebody saying, you know, is it practical? Is it doable? Uh, which uh, I presume will come through things like Indy. So we don't have, you know, any grand designs on, on that front. We want to be very practical in terms of the uh, creation of, interface, of an interface, but we do need participation from the various DLT, uh, um, Fact, uh, DLTs under um, under Hyperledger, especially the uh, identity folks, to come together. Uh, the most uh, common uh, participants are from Indy and from uh, you know through extension from Sovereign, but I don't see anybody from Fabric, for example, or um, you know or uh, or even sawtooth. So if we want to ever write some kind of interface, then we need those kind of participants as well. So I encourage um, people from those walks, from those DLT platforms to participate and give suggestions. You know, Arno, you're, you're right that, you know, splitting it up uh, may be a good thing. But in, in, in fact, in the architecture working group, there is another uh, group that is going to take uh, on the identity issue, but it is presumably about node identities or system identities. But then, uh, you know, where does that end and where does the identity of the transactors begin? That is, a, you know, up to interpretation. So. I do, I do participate in the in those in the architecture working group. So hopefully, I'll be able to take some of that learnings into the identity working group. Anything else, or any directive from the TSC as to what what else can be done or changed? to um, make us more productive. So I'll just, you know, the one, one piece of suggestion that I might add to your problem of finding the right time for the call that it doesn't disadvantage our colleagues in Asia um, is something that I've done in the W3C and Oasis when I've chaired working groups and that is to alternate the time of the call to make it disadvantageous to everybody at some point in time. <clears throat> and so, you know, you might alternate it between, um, it, you know, uh, early morning to early evening, for instance, and then, you know, on an alternate, you know, monthly or biweekly, you know, time scale, um, you know, you may be on a call at eight in the evening or you may be on the call at eight in the morning or nine or whatever. Um, but that that's really the only way to, to get any kind of fairness. Uh, or you might alternate at eight hour shifts, right? Um, but um, an hour, you know, making it 11 o'clock as opposed to midnight isn't necessarily really giving anybody a... Uh, no, but that was a suggestion from a person from China. It's not okay. like I came up with that uh, myself. Right. 
uh, it's fair it's, enough. Uh, uh, it's not. It's not. I didn't. I didn't make that that one up. But yeah, you know that person said, uh, "Look, you know, um, make it at eleven o'clock in the morning would help us." Mm -hmm. So uh, even that minor adjustment could uh, draw in some more uh, interest. Mm -hmm. So what do you yeah, think of that? Well, if that's if that satisfies it, that's fine. It's, again, it depends on the population. Um, any other thoughts for Vipin? Yeah, I mean, I, no. The only thing, practically speaking, you know, it seems like I understand this can be easily overwhelming, and uh, you know, you talked about splitting in two pieces. Maybe you need to be even more nimble and and split further. I don't know. I was quite impressed by the way the architecture working group, which you're familiar with, I understand, it, you know, is is managed to split it in pretty small pieces they, they could tackle in a fairly reasonable amount of time, which of course, you know, is much more exciting for everybody and will attract more people. Then now we are like more than two years in, the identity working group was created from the get go and there is not really anything to show. And I can imagine it's hard to attract people and get people really motivated. And, you know, it seems like maybe a practical way to make progress is to get somebody to put pen on paper and start writing something and get the ball rolling and try oh, to- we, 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 we do have something. It's not like we have nothing. Uh, and plus, uh, uh, in all fairness, I must say that the whole Charter business uh, was only uh, what I, I don't even yeah. remember exactly when, uh, but um, you know uh, the identity working group was uh, first constituted right from the beginning as a forum for uh, talking about the different yeah. uh, uh, not to uh, put out a paper, and of course uh, that uh, the, the the paper business came later. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there are other groups that were uh, tasked with writing a paper right from the beginning, like the white paper working group. I mean, I know that the, in terms of the architecture, at least you have a way to split it by things like consensus, uh, algorithms, uh, uh, you know, smart contracts, and so on and so forth. Um, but in the identity uh, world, um, you know, it, it is it is difficult uh, because the topic is we lose Vipin. Did we lose him as well? I wasn't sure if it was just. <laughs> I, I heard him sort of phasing in and out. I wonder if he's pacing around and lost his sound. <laughs> Let's give him a second to see if he pops back. Um, so a small point on this, a lot of the architecture working groups uh, outputs have come as a result of kind of a smallish number of people, maybe four or five, like meeting somewhere for a day and just really trying to crank out work. Right. Oh, I see we lost it, and let's give him a minute, see if he can dial back in. Yeah, no, I see, but also, especially if you're hyperledger, like the specific projects that we have, consensus is a little bit easier, right, to talk about, because everybody has some smart contract logic that is shared on the chain. You know, so other than killed and the AD, right, the indie part, which also has some logic. It's a lot more difficult to talk about in kind of, I don't know, theoretical level overview and then state where Hyperledger believes all the, I don't know, fits kind of fall into place together and how. I don't know if you remember, but actually, most of the people in the TSC may remember. 
I wrote up identity over and over, right? In many hackathons and hackfests. And it was very difficult to convince people, hey, why don't you use the equivalent of the Fabric CA X509 thing? Because Iroha had a different way of looking at it. Sodos had a different way. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it may be easier maybe to ease the requirements. So let's at least start with like a deeper overview of where we are today, what's trendy in the market, and get feedback from the projects where you want to be, and then try to get something bigger, like high pillage of level. So it's going to be similar to what, how to say. Let's take a group of like, yeah, four, five, even three people that will ask around, get the latest status, look at what's out there in the market, and then even do like a gap analysis. Uh, by the way, I don't think there's actually a gap in the negative way, right? I think, I think we are very advanced in, 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 especially on permission chains. Hyperledger is like leading most of the standardizations, even though it's not like the standard, people are looking up to, how did Fabric do it? Okay, so what do you do with Indie? And you know, people are looking at, okay, identity, where, how? So I, I think there's a lot of potential here. But it's not as similar, it's, it's a different breed, right? It's a different animal than consensus, smart contracts, or even a, a ledger or a market tree. It's a very different kind of beast, right? So in terms of concrete uh, suggestions for the identity working group, where, where are we? I, I'm sorry, I, I, I was off for a minute. I'm just saying that I think it's a, it's a more difficult problem. It's a more difficult thing to look at the identity as if it's like all coherent and all the standards are out there. Just like you know today, it's very easy to look at the market tree and how it's implemented, the smart contract, how it's implemented, you know, what's a validator. That, that's a more generic term that we can talk on the hyperledger level. Identity is a lot more fragmented, right? Even inside a hyperledger. So, so I think it's a much maybe more the first difficult problem to solve. So maybe to start with something easier, just to kind of list out what we have, where we are, what would be nice to have. Because it's difficult to get like five people from different projects to agree on a standard now. That will be meaningful, right? It's to you, Vivian, and to the whole DSC. I'm just thinking. Uh, like the way so the identity is different. Then. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly it's a complex topic. This is Leonard here. And Vipin, you know, we have some missing parts of the document on identity. And as Jonathan said, it's very abstract. I mean, we don't have one standard for identity. Almost everyone in the world, every consortium in the world is looking at self-sovereign identity to find a solution. So there's no one solution that fits all that has been developed yet. And therefore talking about con um, standards is a, mute, is, a, is a mood point. However, we started a very abstract approach. The document is not complete, but there are, there are missing parts. And I think what we need to do is to plug in these missing parts with, um, you know, a right level of documentation that makes sense. Bearing in mind or bringing together all the different aspects of identity as we see currently happening out there. Um, based on self-sovereign identity. Now, I just recently saw a video, I think it's a sort of video called Identity Distilled. And it makes a lot of sense because it considers the different sort of um, matrices and attributes that are very important with regards to identity. So even around that, as Jonathan said, we could use that as a nucleus of understanding and comprehension within the team and see how we can flesh it out further with the attributes that we've already considered within the architecture group as well as identity. So I think that will help us because literally we've asked for volunteers to light up some of these sections and it's, it, it, it's not happening. So we now need to go back and reorganize and try and do something ourselves, I think. If we leave it out there to volunteers, it may not happen for another six months or more. So I That's not true. Uh, Leonard, first of all, that is not true. There have been volunteers 
and they have contributed to the paper. So yes, let's, not, let, let, let's not carry, get carried away by saying nothing is happening. <laughs> no, okay? I say... Okay, I that, said, that, okay. just, just, just <laughs> you know, stating the facts here. I can give yes. you a set of volunteers and what they have done. Yes, okay, and so I don't, said, don't, I said don't make statements parts. like that. Yeah, no, please. I said, I said, okay. I said, I right. said just the missing parts. Um, maybe you didn't hear that part, <clears throat> Dipin. Okay. I contributed so, one section, but we have some missing parts. It's the missing parts I want to focus on. Okay. Because I said we have a paper. Maybe you didn't hear that part. I do apologize, but maybe you missed out on that part. <clears throat> it's only the missing parts. We need to complete the paper. Yeah. And I'm saying we've asked a long time for volunteers, but that isn't happening for the missing part. So how can we manage the missing yeah. parts? So I think, I think this needs to be taken offline and handled in the identity working group and um, uh, in terms of who's, who can do what and so forth. Um, are there any other thoughts for Vipin based on feedback of the, <laughs> of the update? Thank you for managing this working group, Vipin. Yeah. <clears throat> he's, he's the, Vipin's done a great job so far. Okay. It's just that okay, then I, better, okay. there is so, a level of frustration that we can't move forward with it, and that's why we need the TSC's help. <laughs> right. So... There's nothing else for Vipin, then I think um, we can call it a day and give people almost a half an hour back. And all right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye.